believe it is already flea season again. Um, here in Southwest Oklahoma, we are already seeing fleas and it's March 24th. Now, my dogs don't have fleas yet. And you know, we do a lot of functions and go places and stuff so they can pick up fleas. So I'm gonna start their pre flea prevention right away. And um, I'll show you what that is. But today I wanna uh, clear up a bunch of misconceptions about the diatomaceous earth. And that's like my number one flea go-to preventative flea killer, everything. Um, but anyways, I've had a lot of comments and stuff on some of my other diatomaceous earth uh, videos saying that they, you know, that it's bad for the lungs and, you know, you can get silicosis and uh, just a lot of naysayers. And while I totally understand, because before I started using it, I was very skeptical and very worried about using it. I've been using it 13 years. And not only do I use it on my dogs, but it's become my, you know, I'm, I use it occupational use. I, and I was so tickled with it. And the fact that you could eat it and it's safe and it kills fleas and I don't have to worry about putting chemicals on my dogs. I, um, you know, started marketing it and selling it as my flea powder and everything. And I absolutely love it. And I'm not just doing that because of my product, because you can go out and buy diatomaceous earth anywhere. And at any farm store, just make sure it's food grade and you can use it. Now I put, you know, neem powder, rosemary, lemongrass. I put herbs in mine that help repel fleas just to kind of brand my flea powder. But I mean, you can use any diatomaceous earth because that's the most active ingredient that kills the fleas. But anyways, I want to clear up the misconceptions because, um, I didn't even realize that our, our our government and a lot of universities have done a lot of studies with um, the diatomaceous earth and the breathing of it and everything. And the studies, I mean, I know it's on the GRAS, generally recognized as safe list for the federal government, for the FDA. And um, it, like diatomaceous earth is very strange because you'll have an EPA if you say that it kills fleas or, you know, kills ants or bugs and any, then you have to have, it has to have an EPA label on it. Even though there's nothing in it, no chemicals, it hasn't changed. It, it can be food grade and the FDA, you know, takes care of that in and the EPA does the, the pest control part. And so there's two different labels for food grade. Now you can't, you cannot, uh, confuse that with pool grade because that's where I think a lot of people are having the misconception is pool grade is very coarse and it's very uh, I don't know it, it if you were to breathe that in it would not be good so and that's sold to like a pool filter thing but anyways if um, if you do the research and you really look it up it's very very safe and it's I mean nobody's gonna even if you put your dog in a box, closed in box and dusted them in and they breathed it that one time, it's not going to hurt them. I wouldn't do that. I mean, I always dust my dogs outside basically because I really don't want a big dusty mess in the house. Even though I have in the winter time, I have had to dust my dogs. Um, I had 10 dogs one time indoors and nine cats and we got fleas from the neighbors next door. And in December, I had fleas still so bad, and we had like freezing temperatures and rain and everything. And I dusted my dogs inside the house, dusted the carpet, dusted everything, and I had diatomaceous earth everywhere. None of us had any problem breathing. It was just a mess. I mean, that's, you know. But anyways, I'm going to read some of these, and then I'm going to link it all down in the description box below. Um, I'm going to read some of this stuff that has come from universities and government studies and let you decide on what you think. And you can check it out for yourself. This is not made up. I'm very shocked I've stumbled across this because for years I've been using anecdotal stuff, you know, like what everybody says about using it being safe. And then the fact that it was on the GRAS list and everything. Um, but yeah, listen to this. Okay, so this I'm going to read from is the National Pesticide Information Center. Like I said, I'll link, link this down below in the description box. Um, this is just going to talk about, it's got 
you know, like a bullet list here of like, what is diatomaceous earth? How are some products that contain it? You know, how does diatomaceous earth work? How might I be exposed to it? What are some of the signs and symptoms from a brief exposure? What happens to diatomaceous earth when it enters the body? Um, is diatomaceous earth likely to contribute to the development of cancer? Has anyone studied non-cancer effects from long-term exposure to diatomaceous earth? That's one I really want to listen to. Um, anyways, there's a lot of good stuff in here, but this will talk about the different types. It's going to have the pool grade and then the, um, you know, the food grade. Silica is very common in nature and makes up 26% of the earth's crust by weight. Various forms of silica include sand, emerald quartz, field spar, mica, clay, asbestos, glass, and silicon. A component of silica does not exist naturally in its pure form. It usually reacts with oxygen and water to form silicon dioxide. Silicon dioxide has two natural occurring forms, crystalline and amorphous. Most diatomaceous earth is made of amorphous silicon dioxide. However, it can contain very low levels of crystalline dioxide. The first pesticide product containing silicon dioxide, diatomaceous earth, were registered in 1960 to kill insects and mites. Okay, what happens to diatomaceous earth when it enters the body? A lot of people take it, you know, to detox and all kinds of stuff, but we'll read this anyway. When diatomaceous earth is eaten, very little is absorbed into the body. The remaining portion is rapidly excreted. Small amounts of silica are normally present in all body tissues, and it's normal to find silicon dioxide in urine. In one study, people ate a few grams of diatomaceous earth. The amount of silicon dioxide in their urine was unchanged. After inhalation of amor amorphous diatomaceous earth, it is rapidly eliminated from the lung tissue. However, crystalline diatomaceous earth is much smaller and it may accumulate in the lung tissue and lymph nodes. Very low levels of crystalline diatomaceous earth may be found in pesticide products. So the pool grade, if you were to inhale that, it will get stuck in your lungs and in your uh, lymph nodes, but not the food grade, the, a very small amount, like very, very small. So it talks about, is it likely to contribute to cancer? No, they, they found no study. I mean, they did all kinds of studies and didn't find any association. Has anyone studied non-cancer effects from long-term exposure to diatomaceous earth? In a rabbit study, researchers found no health effects after applying diatomaceous earth to the rabbit's skin five times per week for three weeks. In a rat study, researchers fed rats high doses of diatomaceous earth for six months. They found no reproductive or de developmental effects. In another rat study, the only effect was more rapid weight gain. That study involved 90 days of feeding rats with a diet made of 5% diatomaceous earth. When guinea pigs were forced to breathe air contained diatomaceous earth for two years, there was a slightly more connective tissue in their lungs. When researchers checked before the two year mark, no effects were found. Very small amount of crystalline diatomaceous earth may be found in pesticide products. Long-term inhalation of the crystalline form is associated with silicosis. The crystalline form, the crystalline form is pool grade. Chronic bron bronchitis and other respiratory problems. The bulk of diatomaceous earth is amorphous, not crystalline. The amorphous form is only associated with mild, reversible lung inflammation. So it is 100% safe. And I know that to be true only because I've been using it for 13 years and I've already had messed up lungs. I have had uh, for... Well, ever since I was born, I had asthma. And then I had a horrible allergy to horses and always had horses and was always, you know, taking primatine mist and shots and all kinds of stuff because of my lungs. And then I lived in Italy for many, many years and got mold in my lungs. And I've had, okay, I've had my lungs, uh, the bronchoscopy thing go down, look at my lungs because my lungs were bleeding 
And in my mind, I was like, oh, it's gotta be the diatomaceous earth, you know? No, my lungs, they said my lungs were perfect. They did diagnose me a couple times with lung cancer, not that they saw then, but with a chest x-ray and they thought I had lung cancer, which is not, it's mold in my lungs. The diatomaceous earth has never bothered my lungs and, it, and my, my animals have never coughed. They've never died of anything, a lung related thing. And I've, I've, I've dusted them all through the summer, sometimes in the winter. I, it's all over my house. I have, I mean, you can touch the, the TV, you know, and it's all, I've dusted the whole house. I've gotten crazy when I've had fleas so bad and put it all under my couch cushions and everything and breathe it in. And it, it, it's never hurt us. Like it, I totally 100% believe like anybody who thinks that you can get silicosis. Um, I even had a doctor tell me, oh, you work around diatomaceous earth, you're going to get silicosis. No, you can't. You, I mean, it's, you can if you're working around pool grade diatomaceous earth. Unfortunately, there's two forms of it. One has been highly heated, which turns the, the amorphous into a, a crystalline, more crystalline. So that is the one that's dangerous. So don't go and get pool grade and dust your dogs. That's, don't do that. Make sure it is 100% food grade. Um, it's safe. I mean, it, it's it very effective. Now, some drawbacks are it dehydrates the fleas and ticks and the, the ants and all, you know, all the bugs and everything. So if you have a really humid, wet, you know, climate, it's going to take a lot longer and it might not even work. The more arid and dry it is, that's why it works great in the summertime. But the, the more dry conditions that it can be, the faster they'll dry out and they'll die. Now you can take, I, I've done this several times, but you can take flea, catch some fleas, not very easy to do, but catch a couple fleas, put them in a container, put a lid on it, throw, poke some holes in there so they get some air, throw some diatomaceous earth in there, and then come back in 24 hours and see how, where those fleas are at, and they'll be dead. And ticks will do it too, but ticks will take longer because they're out, they have like a harder outer shell, so it takes, hard, it takes longer for them to, to dehydrate and die. Do, fleas do it really fast but it will work on ticks. When I've gotten rescue dogs that have had like ticks all over their ears and in the, between their paws and everything, if you take and just pack that full of diatomaceous earth and really let it sit on there and everything, they'll shrivel up and die. I've seen that a thousand times, but it's really best to pick all the ticks off your dog and, um, and then go ahead and, you know, dust them then so that way it'll repel them because the fleas don't the fleas and ticks don't just diatomaceous earth alone they are less apt to jump on your pet um it it absorbs a lot of the odor it's like a a neutral odor neutralizer so i think that's the way it might work because it makes the dog not so smelly you know i notice that when they have it on i i don't they don't smell so doggy and i think that's why the fleas and ticks can't smell them you know but anyways, I just wanted to read that to you and clear that up. Uh, there's a whole lot of more information on this. If you study the amorphous uh, versus the, you know, the crystalline, um, that's what everyone needs to be doing instead of just spouting off that diatomaceous earth, you know, causes silicosis and it's really bad for the, the you know, lungs and the dogs and everything. I mean, we all have to do research and that's why I'm making these videos is I just want people to know that there are better things out there for flea control than some of the chemicals that we have to put on them. And um, I've reverted to chemicals and I, I regret it. You know, like I, I've done that. My, I, I used to go to my vet and buy the chemicals, the spot-ons on the back. I gave them the pills. I did all that. And I, I mean, just so much cancer and, and diseases. I, you know, I, I, I lost three dogs, bam, 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 all of cancer. Um, I'm just going more and more natural as much as I can. And I just want to spread the word. Anyways, I'd like for you to spread the word too. Please share this with um, any, any of your pet loving friends. Let them know that diatomaceous earth is not a bad thing. It really does work. It's safe. If they are a little bit on the fence, tell them about this. Tell them to research it more. I mean, that's what we have to do. We have to really dig. And it's always the way you research. Like if you go in and you research, uh, 
diatomaceous earth bad for the lungs. I mean, you're going to get all that. You're going to see diatomaceous earth benefits. You're going to get all that. So be careful how you research things too, because sometimes you'll ask Google something. And I actually used to work for Google and I ranked websites. So I like kind of know what we're supposed to be looking for to rank them. And anyways, I don't know if I'm supposed to say any of that, but, uh, you know, it's, uh, it's all in the way you research stuff. So be careful with that. Well, anyways, get out there and dust your dogs. Flea season's coming. It's March. It's going to be April. It's going to be hot. And um, there's nothing worse than having fleas. They're just awful. But anyways, I'm going to go ahead and show you just a little bit of video footage of me dusting my dogs. And I'll see you in the next video coming soon.